G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, when you're doing metal turning, you've got a lathe, you've got to have a lot of tooling and stuff, and some things you just can't do without, you know, you've got to have cutters and boring bars, and one thing also you definitely have to have is a centre drill, so that you can centre work and support it with a, with a live centre. I mean, centre drills come in all sorts of sizes, uh, from small to big. This is what I use, number two, um, I use number two a lot. I find that's a good size for most work up to about 20 mil. Once you go beyond that, well then you go with another size, larger size. And I'll also do quite small stuff without, you know, uh, intruding too much. So you start off and you, you, you get yourself a set of those set of drills, you know, uh, half a dozen or so that go from say number one up to number five or six. And uh, that's okay while you haven't broken any of them, but as soon as you break one, well, if it's the size you use the most, so then you've got to buy some more. So you don't you don't buy a set like that again. You, you know, you buy a, a, a batch of the size that you want to use. And as I said, I like number twos. So I'll show you in the, the drawer my box of set of drill, um, drill bits. All right, we're looking here and... Here's my box of centre drills, and you can see there's a whole range of sizes. The trouble with centre drills is they're okay until you break the tip off of them, and then they're, they're useless. See, that one's got the tip broken off, and it's been resharpened by somebody. I didn't do that. But I mean, the little tip, um, the bit that sticks out of the end, like one like that, a good one, well, that's basically where your uh, oil cavity go is, you know, to, to support your lubrication of the of the of the um, the tip. But what I'm getting around to is, okay, you know, you're going to break them, and the smaller they are, the easier you're going to break them. Particularly if you're working on hard metal steels, particularly. And uh, you know, I, I had to buy some more number twos the other day because I'm just about out. And I had a look around, and what got me was that on the internet, the prices are astronomical for what is a simple little thing. I mean, the prices are absolutely ridiculous, and they range from what looks to be good value up to what looks to be terrible value. It's unbelievable. So I've, I mean, I've bought cheaper ones in the past, and, you know, my attitude is, well, screw it, I'm not going to spend a fortune on this stuff. Why should a high-speed steel little drill cost any more, you know, a centre drill cost any more than a normal high-speed drill? I mean, it's crazy. So anyway, I'll show you some I've got in from uh, China. I, I bought them myself. I didn't get them from Banggood, so, you know, don't get excited. These weren't freebies. And uh, anyway... I got these off of uh, off of eBay. They look to be good. I'll undo them and we'll see if they are any good. Right, here they are. It's a pack of ten, and it cost me the princely sum of six dollars fifty-two cents to loop it from China. They look to be nicely packaged. Uh, they're high-speed steel. I mean, pretty much all of them you see advertised are high-speed steel. Some are gold-plated and look fancy. Some of them. Um, are really expensive, as I said, and some are cheap. Now, the thing is, you know, if you're ever going to buy any of this stuff, it's like drills. If you ever buy drills, high-speed steel drills, you always make sure that they have some sort of rating on them that is meaningful. Like high-speed like high steel drills, unless they are rated for stainless steel, I won't touch them. You know, if they're rated for stainless steel, well, they'll be good for anything, really. But uh, in the case of these... Um, little centre drills, most of them you see advertised, it just says high-speed steel or great hard high-speed steel, you know, or silver high-speed steel even. Well, how about that? But the thing is, they don't give you a high-speed steel rating, and high-speed steel comes in a lot of different hardness levels. They're not, by any stretch, all the same. Now, the rating you want for a centre drill is 6542 or 6543. Uh, that is a very good standard. It's industrial grade. Out of all the ones that were for sale, these were the only ones which gave the rating and they rated them as 6542s. So, here they are. So I'll undo them and we'll have a look at them. Right, I 
I like the little box, it's neat. And uh, yeah, they look good. Mm, plenty of oil. And a little packet that. I don't know what, that, what that's all about. Certificate of quality. Well, there it is, but you can't read it because it's soaked in oil. But I mean, being high speed steel, well, you won't wonder why they even wanted to oil them. But I suppose they're being doubly careful they don't rust. And, uh, yeah, all right, I'll, I'll wash one off with a bit of petrol and we'll come in and have a look at it. Okay, so here's a closer look, and uh, yeah, it's just marked in Chinese uh, as number two. And it's got some Chinese writing, and it says number two high-speed steel. Once again, I'm just taking them on, them on their word that it is actually six five four two high-speed high steel. Um, nothing on the box to say. There's no numbers. That indicate the uh, the type. So the only thing we can do is try them out and see if they're any good. So I'll put it in the uh, put this one in the uh, the chuck, uh, the drill chuck, and we'll try drilling it uh, into some metal and see if the tip breaks off. I mean, <laughs> that's what fails, you know. The tips snap off eventually, and yeah. All right, we'll give it a go. Right, that's the number two that was in there. Here's the new one. It's a bit shorter, you can see in the body, but that doesn't matter. Let's stick it in and give it a go. Alright. Alright, first off we'll just do some mild steel. I've faced it off. We're spinning at 620 RPM. problem, we'll do it dry. Alright, we'll go to something a bit more difficult. main thing with this is don't feed in too fast and also make sure you've got that end faced off flat you know if it's oscillating it's going to almost certainly break the tip off your drill bit your center drill and if you feed in too fast once again it can snap the tip off and then you've got all sorts of strife trying to get the bit out because you know if your machines were given length you've got to rework it and you may not have enough metal so yeah slow feed rate lube please yourself uh, if you have a really hard stuff put some lube on for sure, but most of the time you can get away doing it dry. Right, well I've knocked the speed back on this rebar to 465 because this is a real centre drill break of this stuff. This is gummy as hell. I've broken quite a few centre drills on rebar over the years and uh, it's not to be trifled with it. And I'll also use some lube on this as well. So 465 and take it easy. Main thing is just keep the feed rate 
blow, quite often you break them off, break the tip off by rushing the job. It pays to also clear the clear the drill bit. Good. No problem. If the tip's going to break off, it will nearly always break off on the last part, when you're almost up to the shoulder, because they choke up inside and bang, that's it. So it did that okay, so that's pretty good. But as I said, this is a bastard of stuff to send a drill. Okay, this is a bit of small stainless. I'll lube this too. I'd only do mild steel dry. It's pretty hard this stuff. Getting pretty hot. There you go, she did it, no problem. So yeah, these are okay for the money. Wow, well, they're amazing, you know. 60 cents each, basically. How can you go wrong? Okay, I'll give you a look at the uh, description and uh, you can make your own mind up on it. So there you have it, these are number twos, I think I'll check out his website and see if he's got any number threes. Twos and threes are good sizes, and uh, particularly for model making, I've got some larger ones I rarely use. So yeah, I thought I'd show you what you get for that sort of money and you can make your own mind up. Alright, that's it from me, uh, have a happy 2018, and I'll see you next time, cheers.